Padum. Padum. I don't know what that means. Hey, welcome to the guide. I'm Yo. That's Will. Uh, video game reviews from Christian dudes. Sometimes movie reviews. We did Paul last week. Uh, got some good feedback on that. And uh, today we're going to cover Homefront, a new shooter that's out for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And we'll also cover quickly U Star 2. Right. Uh, it's kind of like karaoke for the movies. We'll get to that. But first of all, Homefront, we talked a lot about the story last time about North Korea invading America, and it has a very strong story and atmosphere. Now, let's tell them more about the gameplay. How does it right. play? Well, if you've played Call of Duty or pretty much anything like that, yeah. then you've played Homefront. Uh, True. To an extent, it's very much a copycat shooter, but I enjoyed it because it had just a few little things that were different about it than, than uh, the past games, mainly in the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Like the campaign, it went really quickly. Cool storyline, but yeah. very repetitive shooting. Yep. When you're in the multiplayer, you can have up to 32 players in a level, which I think is fun because that just yeah. makes for a. I'm always a big team battle fan, yeah. and uh, the levels are do a good job in supporting mm -hmm. uh, the large amount of the players. The levels are very well designed. I like how wide open they are. I like how some of them have a lot of vertical elements to them. So right. the, the, the design for the multiplayer levels are really good. Yeah, there's a lot of good places to hide and, yeah. and, and interact with. And then uh, the vehicles, I think, too, are probably one of the reasons why I've enjoyed it so much. Is because <laughs> you can you can fly helicopters, drive tanks. You can choose from American or the the Korean mm -hmm. models of them, um, and then the battle points that they use. Battle points were cool. Which I think is a better idea than the Call of Duty uh, yeah. rank points, yeah. because you can get battle points in Homefront from pretty much anything. You can even get them from dying. So yeah. if you die a lot, you'll get battle points, <laughs> and you can implement them anywhere in the middle of a game. You can summon a, a tank, or depending on how many points you have. Like I was getting pwned by a tank, and I, that, that was the first time I realized how cool battle points were. There's this tank just driving around destroying everybody and I had it set up where I could spend my battle points on an RPG. So the tank was driving by, boom, I spent my battle points, because I wasn't a class that would normally have an RPG. Right. But I was able to buy it, zoom, got my RPG, boom, tank gone. I felt awesome, and it, <laughs> it, it, it's cool how the battle points can kind of um, sway the tide of the battle. Totally. If they're spent wisely. With that said, the downsides were some server issues. Now, I was reading on their website, they were having uh, some people blog in, and. And they actually responded with, with answers, which I thought was yeah, courteous cool. of them. Yeah. It's a lot of people don't well, do that. Well, obviously they're trying to build their fan base. Yeah, but yeah. they're saying they've uh, some of the server issues, just uh, lack of being able to connect into a game right away, is just because... I had that problem. They, they said they're having more than twice as many players as they expected or well, anticipated. It's, it's sold a million copies so far, which is surprising, actually, I think. Yeah. However, I gotta say, I didn't find the multiplayer quite as compelling as you did. I mean, it really felt like a Call of Duty clone or a spin-off, right. or like I was just playing another version of Call of Duty. I mean, you have the perks, you have the weapon loadouts, everything is taken from Call of Duty. And that's not a bad thing, because that is a good template to copy. Yeah. But it kind of made me feel, if I'm going to play Call of Duty anyway, why don't I just really go play a Call of Duty? Because <laughs> it looks better, first of all. I think Call of Duty has better graphics. It has better sound. I found the sound design in Homefront really lacking. Really? Uh, it was kind of just mundane. Um, and yeah, it just felt like it just felt like Call of Duty. So why why wouldn't I just go play Call of Duty? Although the battle point system was a very cool feature, and I did like the way they implemented that. And the vehicles were fun too. But it, again, there's another game that does that better. Uh, Bad Company Two. The vehicles are so much more. They're probably tougher to master. Right. In Bad Company Two, but they have. I don't know, they have a bigger feeling of oomph and power to them. So, and, and I think they're balanced a little bit better. So, this game does a lot of things well. Right. There's a lot of games that do what this game does better. And I think if you're just an average gamer who, if you're not really into the uh, the shooter games like Battlefront and Call of Duty, this is something that you can yeah. you can get into, mm -hmm. and it's it's not going to be that challenging right. Uh, right off the bat for you right. to, to keep up with it. Well, what would you give it? I, uh, out of seven, seven being perfect. I, I would give it a five. That's, wow. Okay. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> that's just me, though. So what, what do you think? Sometimes, kids, we just don't get along. Uh, uh. No, I'd give, it, I'd give it a four out of seven. Uh, again, because the, the single player was short, and the gameplay itself was kind of mundane. The multiplayer, it's decent fun, but again, it reminded me of other games that did the same things better, except for the battle point system, which was interesting. And then, you know, just because of the over-the-top over language and, and some yeah. of the brutality of the, of the story, which was kind of necessary to tell the story they were telling, but still, it it, is, it's pretty rough. It's a brutal story. Yeah, yeah it really is. So, 
Yeah, I'd give it four out of seven. Um, not my favorite shooter. I was happy to send it back <laughs> once, I, <laughs> once I was done with reviewing it and send it back for Gamefly. Well, that's because you're too busy starring in the movies, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, U Star 2, available for Xbox 360 Connect, uh, it's kind of like karaoke for the movies. Basically, what happens is there's a clip from a certain film, say Superman Returns, and it'll put the lines that you are supposed to read as the character up on the screen. And then the Xbox 360 Connect camera will uh, take a, a clip of you, they'll shoot you, and insert you into that movie clip. Kind of cool, right? Right. Except the novelty wears off, like, after two or three times. I, I could imagine, yeah. Because <laughs> that's all you really can do. Yeah, it, it, it does, there's not a whole lot that happens. And it's kind of funny if you have, like, two people doing a scene, you're both looking at the screen to read your lines, and so you're not really interacting <laughs> with each other, and it just looks kind of awkward. Hi, how are you? Oh, oh. I'm doing fine. Oh, that's great. And so it's kind of weird. If you have uninhibited people in a party setting, it can be a lot of fun for a little while. <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, probably not worth investing in. Um, I, I'd really give U-Star 2 uh, a 4 out of 7 as well. Uh, the, the microphone's really sensitive. There's like a challenge mode, but the challenge is... You know, when you're not reading your line, you're supposed to be quiet while the other characters are doing their thing in the scene. Except the microphone on the Xbox 360 Connect will interpret for this game any sort of background noise as you trying to say something, and it'll dock you points for trying to interrupt. Well, that's the challenge to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, you can't though. It's impossible <laughs> unless you're like in a soundproof booth. So it has its problems. It yeah, the novelty value is there. It just wears off really quickly. So I wasn't a huge. I I thought I was gonna really like it. Really? Like who wouldn't want to be in Superman Returns? But it just didn't work out really well. <laughs> Turns uh, out Superman was better in it than I was. Yeah, but you know when when I was playing it, it, it kind of made me think about how sometimes as Christians we can put ourselves uh, as Christians into a role. You know where we yeah. act a certain way, where we we try to you know sound a certain way. You know, we, we know how to read the lines to our part as a Christian, all the Christianese, and we're just acting out a role. And that's not what we're called to. Jesus came to call us to a genuine, real life, yeah. life to the full. And he wants us to not just play a role, but he wants us to be like him. Our, our role isn't to, you know, sound and act and be uh, a good Christian as a facade. Right. We're to be little Christ. Yeah, in everything that we do. We're not just a, a Sunday morning act. We're, right, we, right. We're twenty four seven. You know. Right. So. And so when I was going through U Star, it just kind of made me think of that. It's like, you know, as a Christian, I don't want to just play a role and read my lines and hope <laughs> I score well when I get to heaven. <laughs> right. I, I really want to represent Christ in everything I do, so that, you know, that's the way, reason they were called Christians because they were little yeah. Christ, and that's what then people did it to mock them. Oh, you're just little Christ. You little Christ ones, Christians. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, we wear, we wear that as a badge of honor now. So something to think about after playing U-Star because there's not much else to think about <laughs> yeah. when you play that, that game. That pretty much says it for U-Star, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, going back to Homefront, one of the things I pulled out of that was uh, where do you place your trust? Because the whole setup for the story of the game, you know, America falls. Right. A lot of people put their trust in nations or people, and that will always let you down. But when we place our trust in God, you know, even if Korea were to invade America, that wouldn't change my condition any because my trust isn't in America. Right. God bless America, but that's not where my trust is. My trust is in God, and I can always rely on that. So, you know, there's some good talking points that we can get out of these games, but uh, I don't think either of them are necessarily worth buying or playing for <laughs> long. <laughs> I know you like Homefront. I just I wasn't a huge fan. Homefront's something that you could wait until... You know, it goes down in price. Yeah, yeah, that would be the best way to approach it. That's what I would say. So, um, next time on the guide, we will take a look at uh, Lego Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. And I've planned, planned a lot of that. I really like it. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get myself involved into the Crisis 2. It's it's right. going to be out next week, so I'm going to develop Man, that there's campaign. there's so many shooters coming out. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. It's getting crazy. So we'll have those for you next week, so I hope you come back and join us for more of The Guide. If you'd like to read more, check out HollywoodJesus.com or send us emails for questions, comments. I'm Will at M88.org and Johan at CalvaryABQ.org. What he said.